have the attitude of gratitude for our mothers. Well, unto you, first of all, the creator of all things. And then to our mothers that we are remembering and appreciating today, we pray, dear Lord, that you will keep them. You will protect them. You will preserve them. You will uphold them. And perfect all that concerns them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, before we continue into the message and the ministration of today, shall we all rise on our feet? We are not saying Happy Mother's Day again. We have said enough of that. Amen. Amen. We are going to do something. As we all are rejoicing today, praising God and appreciating God for mothers, there are some people that are women too. Some of them married, some of them not married. But looking around, there is nobody they could point to to say, this is my own biological child. Before we go further into anything, we want to remember such women as mothers as well. Committing them to the hands of the Lord. That the God of heaven will remember them for good. Amen. Shall you? Shall we pray please? That the Lord God had remembered Mother Sarah. The Lord God that remembered Abigail. The Lord that remembered Elizabeth. The Lord that remembered Hannah. We remember them. We visit them. And bless them in abundance in Jesus name. In their lifetime, they will carry their baby. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we are grateful unto you for a day like this. That we can take it upon ourselves to remember women married. And some of them may be not married. But without a fruit of the womb, they could point to to say, this is mine. We look up unto the Father and pray, knowing that you are a faithful God, knowing that you are the God that hears the cry of your own children and answer the prayers of the faithful ones. Lord God, remembering that you are the one that heard the plea, the petition of people in time past, even Sarah, that had lost hope of anything happening. Oh Lord, you brought hope back into her life. You brought joy back into her life. You brought crying of babies back into the family. We pray, dear Lord, that all the women in our churches, both here in this place and in other places, Lord, remember them now in Jesus' name. Every impediment in their life, every hindrance is an obstacle to childbearing. We cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we know age is nothing before you. If Sarah could do it at an old age, Father Lord, remember your sister, your daughters in Jesus' name. Father, put joy in their heart. Put laughter in their mouth. Lord, give them testimonies in the name of Jesus. Do it, Father, for your own glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. That done. We want to remind ourselves that today is Mother's Day. And please pay attention as we talk about mothers. Whether you have your own biological children or not, you can still be a mother. You can still live like a mother. You can still have the characteristics of a mother. You can still enjoy the privileges and the blessings of a mother. And you can really, really live in the joy and the blessings of the Lord. I'll be talking to moms today. 
As a matter of fact, the title of my message is Mom. Somebody say, somebody say Mom. Mom. How do you spell Mom? M-O-M. Somebody say Mom. Mom. I have tried to break it down so that you will understand. What does Mom mean? It is Ministry of Mothers. The Ministry of Mothers. Somebody say Amen to that. Amen. amen. And so, I'm here to remind our mothers on a glorious day like this. That you have a calling in your life. That you have a ministry to which God has called you into. And to remind you that God is expecting you to fulfill that ministry. And I declare in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill it in Jesus' name. Whether you are already a mother, you are expectant mother, God has an expectation from you. And you'll be a blessing to your generation in Jesus' name. The question is, why are mothers called mothers? What then are the responsibilities of mothers? We need to understand that a woman or a mother is first of all a woman. A mother is first of all a woman, not a girl. Not a girl. So, a girl should remember the difference between a woman and a girl. A woman by divine design. A woman by biological designation. A woman by societal recognition. A woman by responsibility. A woman by maturity. By conduct, by character, by attitude that she displays on daily basis. There is, again, a big difference between a mother or a woman, rather, and a girl. So, I'm talking to women today. I'm talking to mothers today. And please understand that whether you have your own child or not, you can be a mother to somebody. I say you can be a mother to somebody and enjoy the life of motherhood while you live. Motherhood is not just a job. It is a calling. And if you don't understand that it is a calling, then you just do it as a job, as a duty. But you have been called into this ministry. If you look at the Bible reading we read earlier on 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, I look at verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have this ministry. If you are a woman, you have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. That is why women generally don't faint. Of course, there are fainting women. But we are talking about women of faith now. We are talking about women of valor. We, we, we are talking about women of grace. We are talking about women of God that never faint, no matter what the challenge of life may be. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So we see here the apostle telling us that as godly women that have a ministry, as godly women that have a calling, that we, by the grace of God, have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. So then, part of your ministry is not dishonesty, but honesty. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Not walking in craftiness, which is the trait of ungodly women, which is the nature and the character of ungodly women, uh, but we have renounced all those things, dishonesty and craftiness, uh, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. God will make you such a glorious woman in the name of Jesus. Understand that your ministry as a woman is a calling from God. Calling with divine approval. Motherhood then must be biblical in nature. 
It must be by practicality and it must be motivational in the way Ramana will do things. The mother after God's heart must go beyond the ordinary in loving her family, in honoring her head, and in the training of her children in godliness with an extraordinary blend of humility. The Lord will give you that quality in Jesus' name. And uh, you are to do that work, that job, that ministry with, all, with the utmost purpose of attracting the glory of God into everything that you do. So then, as a woman, remember this day that you call the Mother's Day. You want to make it a day of self-assessment. You want to make it a day of self-evaluation. You want to make it a day of reconnecting with God and with the purpose of creation and uh, allow God to be glorified in your life in Jesus' name. To accomplish the purpose of God for your life, then as a woman and as a mother in the ministry, you must have a very strong conversion, experience of conversion. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You don't want to labor and labor and labor all your life and then end up in perdition, end up in destruction, end up in pain and in agony for the rest of your life. You must be a woman with skillful tongue. When I talk about skillful tongue, I'm talking about a woman that knows how to use a tongue rightly. A woman that knows how to control the tongue. A woman that knows how to speak the word that seasoned in time a woman that knows how with a tongue with a mouth knows how to be a blessing to people around her you also must be a spotless a woman with a spotless conscience spotless conscience that means you are a woman with a clean heart hebrews chapter 13 hebrews chapter 13 I'm looking at the 18th verse over there. You must be a woman with a spotless conscience every day of your life. In anything you do, that means your conscience must be clean. Paul said, here in Dua, exercise my conscience that I may have a heart void of offense both towards God and towards man. Hebrews chapter 13, are you there in verse 18? It says, pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience, a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly, honestly. That means beyond what any man can say, beyond what, what man can see. You understand that God sees the heart, knows the heart, and judges the intent of the heart. You want to be sure that you are clean and spotless in your conscience as a mother on mission, a mother in the ministry. You also must ensure that you have a sacred, consecrated body. Sacred, consecrated body. That means your body is set apart for God. Sacred for holy use. Sacred for God and God alone. Your body is not just for the public anymore. Your body is not for display to the world. Like we see the women of this age do. That everything that needs to be covered is unexposed out there. No, you are not like one of them. And you are not the type that a man out there is just messing up with your body. Or you are the one going after them. You are holy, you are pure, you are sanctified, you are consecrated and separated unto the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 9, First Corinthians chapter 9. I look at the 27th verse, First Corinthians chapter 9, verse uh, chapter, uh, chapter, yes, chapter 9, verse 27. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 it says but i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a what a castaway you will not be cast away in jesus name if you are going to be a real woman in ministry ministry of mothers mothers in the ministry you are going to be sure that your companions are saved, saved companions. 
saved associates. That means I'm talking about your friends, the people you relate with, the people you fellowship with, the people you commune with, the people you counsel with. They must be born again. May women of like passion, the people, women that fears the Lord, women that loves the Lord, women that are following the Lord, women that are doing the will of God. You must also be a woman with spirited exploit. Spirited exploit. That means you are a woman of courage. You are a woman of conviction. You are bold. You are willing and ready to go all the way to serve the Lord because as a woman in the ministry, in the ministry, you are busy daily doing the biddings and the will of the master you are not an idle woman you are not a lawless woman you are not a careless woman you are not uh, a lazy woman you are busy doing something for god and for his glory and uh, finally in this section you are a woman that gives credit to your head you honor your head your husband you respect your husband you appreciate your husband you, you you give gratitude to your husband you esteem your husband you praise him and you admire him that the means as a woman you are expected and called to be a, to be blameless in anything and everything that you do and when we talk of being blameless one you are a blessing to your generation a blessing to your to your husband, a blessing to your children, a blessing to your community. Understand, to be a mother, if all that you do is only to your biological children, you have all men a failure, of all women a failure in life. But as a woman, you are a blessing to everybody, whether your direct children or your extended children, children in the faith, children in the community, you are a blessing to everybody and then they see the blamelessness in you to be blameless, number one, you must be a blessing to others. Number two, you must be loving in all of your relationship and spelling blameless right now. Number three, you must be accountable in conduct, in behavior, demeanor, manner, comportment, and deportment. That is the conduct. conduct. Number, what's the next one now? Number four, which is letter M, you must be merciful in conduct. You must be efficient in service. You must be lowly in heart. You must be exemplary in lifestyle, sincere in all dealings, submissive to God and his will, his word, and his way. That is how to be blameless, and God will give you the grace in Jesus' name. And God will keep you by his power in Jesus' name. I look at three points. Number one, the ministerial calling of mothers. The ministerial calling of mothers. Number two, the ministerial characteristics of mothers. And finally, number three, the master's crowning of mothers. The first one is the ministerial calling of mothers. Once again, your ministry is a call from God, ordained by God, and pay attention, you have been called into that ministry different from the calling of your husband, different from the calling of other men or men, different from the calling of people that are not mothers, you have been called into that office, into that ministry, and understand that God that called you will keep you. God that call you will call you will preserve you and will anoint you for that work in Jesus name. I'm looking at second Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1. I look at it from verses 5 through to 8. Second Peter chapter 1. Looking at it from verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, and increase, and multiply, they make you that ye shall never be barren nor unfruitful. Somebody just doze off. 
I said in the name of Jesus, you'll never be barren or unfruitful in Jesus' name. So, you will not be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we see this calling is a call unto godliness. Before any other thing, understand as a woman, your primary calling is unto godliness, is unto righteousness, is unto purity and uprightness. And so, once you have that understanding, anything you do, everything you do, whether in the secret or in the private, God will be number one in it and through it in Jesus' name. Number two, you remember that you have been called first to godliness, secondly to companionship as a wife. You cannot, you are not expected to be a mother without being a wife to somebody. You're supposed to be a wife. No matter what this age and generation is doing, they are going the wrong way. Come back to the Bible. The first thing is, be a wife before you become a mother. I know and I understand there are women that they have three children for three men. Some may have five children for five different men. That is, there is no godliness in that. There is no righteousness in that. There is no virtue in that. There is no morality in that. There is nothing good for us to learn from that. And that is not the kind of life that we want to live. But we are women of God. You are women of God and of faith. And the first thing is be a wife. Someone, tell somebody, be a wife. And if for any reason you are not with your husband, I pray, the Lord will reconnect you back in Jesus' name. As a mother, your primary duty is to be a wife to the father of your children. And please pay, uh, pay attention here. Your first child as a woman, your first child as a mother is who? Only few women know the answer. That is why I have to teach you this today. Amen? Amen? So, the few of you that know, see, can you please say it loud and clear for those that didn't know to know their first baby. Who is your first baby in the family? All right. So, now you want to personalize it, all you women. If you are not a mother, keep quiet. What I mean by not a mother is you are not a woman. You are not at that age yet. Praise God. So, keep quiet now. Then you say, Okay, let's do it this way. All women, raise up your right hand. And say, in the name of Jesus, by the grace of God, I admit today that my first child in the family is my husband. I will feed him. I will care for him. I will nurture him by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I see that woman pointing to her husband. Say, this is the one I'm talking about. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at it. Proverbs chapter 31, the Bible says in verses 11 and 12, the heart of her husband doth safely, safely trust in her. Trust in her. Do you understand that when the mothers are carrying their baby, no matter what is going on, the children trust themselves to the hands of the mother, rely on the, on the mother, depends on the mother, and the Bible is not saying that the heart of the husband of this woman safely, securely trusts in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Can you see that? And verse 12, she, the woman, the wife, will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Somebody say amen to that. That then means, as a woman of God, as a woman in the real ministry called by God, you cannot, you should not, you must not do anything that will hurt your husband or create any evil for him in any way or form then to be a mother understand number one you are a wife to your husband 
you are the wife of uh, to the father of your children you care for him you support him you feed him you are concerned about his head and everything and then you become a supporting pillar in the family of course other children will come that you care for your if your second born is a boy or a girl you know what i mean by second born now am i still have i lost you you know you know your second born okay now what do you call your second born now you call your second child your first child but get the correction right now who is your first child again your husband amen i can see some that are not married see my husband god will give you that husband in jesus name you become a supporting pillar in the family that is part of your calling as a woman you are a pillar in the family upon whom the rest of the family must lean at all times at all times once again primarily your husband and then the other children number three you are a mother not just a woman now but a mother a mother and uh, i want to remind you men you have to forgive me here because i want to see something when fathers they come i will talk to the women too amen mothers do you know that your first son always cry and whine do you know do you know what i'm talking about so if you have a husband that cries and whines why does he do that because it's your first child amen he's your first child crying for what attention i think some people here they have experience amen he needs attention and pay attention here pay attention here when it is just you and the woman you are doing honeymoon everything is rosy Amen. Everything is uh, young cloud nine. Praise God. But do you know that when the second child comes into the family, you know the second child, how much attention does the man get at that point? Well, some say 50%. I've been in a meeting and somebody said, somebody said the man now gets 30%. Amen. And somebody who has been getting 80, 90 percent attention, now getting 30, 50, 50 percent attention. What does he do? He whines. <laughs> and then you complain. Why are you whining? Well, it is natural. Understand, you are a mother. Don't blame the man. He's doing the natural thing. Because when your real biological child whines, you don't uh, spank the child. You try to meet the need of the child. Try to meet the need of the man. And those of you that have taken away so much from the man and start giving to other, other children, uh, you need to reverse it and begin to correct things. So, you are a mother. Tell somebody you are a mother. You are a minister. This is your ministry. As a mother, you are a minister. You are to teach. You are to educate. You are to guide, you are to direct, you are to instruct and understand you are the one ministering to the needs of the family. When they are sick, you are the one ministering. When they are hungry, you are the one ministering. When uh, there is time for them to go to school and to dress up, you are the one ministering to all those. You are the minister. And uh, pay attention here, the Bible says that the one that is actually serving at the table is the greatest. Amen? And that is why women are great. I said they are great. Luke chapter 22 verse 27 says, For whether is greatest, greatest he that sitteth at meal, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. As he that serveth. Let me tell you this. Mothers are strong. I said they are strong. And in spite of all that they do, I think they said, I don't know whether it is true, that they live longer. 
I don't know whether it is true. Amen. Is it true? Okay, that's what you said. Amen. Praise God. But uh, by the grace of God, all of us will live long in Jesus' name. You are the minister. You nurture. You are the one that nurtures the family. Remember, I told you that everybody, like a pillar, depends on you, rests on you. If you don't know this, you will turn the table around, and instead of you caring for people, you'll be looking for people to care for you. You'll be the one whining and crying, complaining and grumbling, but when you know your calling, that's why I use that word calling, when you know your calling that this is my ministry, and then I must do it faithfully, I must do it courageously, I must do it sincerely, God will give you the grace in Jesus' name. You are a nurturer. You nurture everybody in the family, beginning with your husband. You have no reason, you have no excuse to ignore your husband, to abandon your husband because of the children. At the same time, you don't abandon the children because of your husband. You now want to do your role effectively. You nurture the children. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6, it says, teach your children or train your children the way that they should go and they will not depart from it when they are old when they are old the lord will give you the grace in jesus name i said the lord will give you the grace in jesus name you are not only training you are teaching you are a teacher as a woman if you understand it is a woman that teaches the children the first letters. It is a woman that teaches the children how to be born again if you have saved yourself. It is a woman that teaches the children how about heaven. So you must be the woman that is always, always teaching your children the things of God, the life of God, the ways of God. You teach them about grace. You teach them, and some youth are busy talking over there and busy preaching over here. Youth over there, pay attention to God's word. Praise the Lord. All right? You teach them morals. You teach them behavior. You know, I was sharing with the seniors yesterday. I was somewhere in North Carolina, and then I met this man as big as myself, uh, maybe even taller than me. And uh, as he was greeting me, I was saying, yes, sir. And then I saw the person prostrating and greeting, and, uh, and eventually he said, sir, you don't know me. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know you. And he said, I am the son of so-and-so sister. The mother had taught him how to respect elders. Even though we are in this country, and everybody thinks uh, uh, that is the culture over there. No, you don't lose your culture. It's a godly culture. It's an honorable culture. And uh, you teach your children. That is the duty of mothers. When you see an elder, you don't just talk anyhow. You answer, sir, or yes, sir answer very well you know i traveled to um what's the name of this place right now i forgot the place where one of our children is uh, schooling amen don't worry if it is to be my wife now she will remember the name easily you know what we're talking about okay now i told you she remember kentucky <laughs> praise god and uh, uh, she took me to this particular person uh that they go to church together and as we sat down together the man was talking and the man said that of all the students in that school that come to their church that none of them refer to him as mr xyz except our daughter she's been taught morals how to respect elders and if we happen to be around and they talk to an adult anyhow, they get it. You know what I'm talking about. And so, as a mother, that should be your primary duty. You teach them morals, behavior, how to dress, how to cover their nakedness, how to comport themselves, how to present themselves, how to live their life in such a way that will be to the glory of God. You teach 
them the gospel. You teach them character. You teach them faith. You teach them about repentance. You teach them about baptism, about restitution. Restitution. You teach them about giving unto the Lord. You teach them about prayer. And I can tell you, well, thank God for fathers. Thank God for fathers. Fathers are great. They have their role. They have their duty and responsibility. But because mothers are the ones that are always nearer and closer to the children, they have the tendency to be the one teaching most of the things. Uh, and uh, the Lord will give you the grace in Jesus' name. So teach them everything about God. Don't say, well, they will learn it at church. Come to think of it. How much time do they spend in the church? How many hours do they spend in the church? Very, very few. Very few. And out of the time they spend in the church, how much of the time do we spend in teaching, but they are with you all for many years before they start going to school? And after they start going to school, they go to school, they come back home. How many times do they come to, to the church in a week? So don't commit your church, uh, your children to the church to train them. It is your job and God will help you to do it well in Jesus' name. It is what you have done at home that we see in the church. If you have done nothing at home, those children become a problem to us in the church. They will kick the teacher. They will stone the pastor. But that will not be your children in Jesus' name. Teach them about the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can do that in your family. You can do that in your home. And the failure to do this will attract the wrath of God. Our brother talking earlier, Ron said that the children, they sang about mothers, but they didn't talk about spanking them. Well, they cannot talk about spanking them because most mothers don't spank their children. Who spanks the children? Fathers. Thank you. Wait until the Father's Day. And I will tell you, fathers, how you must do your job very well. Amen. And then, as a mother, it's part of your ministry to cook. What did I just say? To cook food. You know, many years back, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and this woman, as at that time, I think she was already maybe almost 70 or thereabout, and uh, um, she said that uh, now that the husband is retired, she also has retired from cooking. <laughs> I said, ma'am, did I hear you well? She said, the husband has retired from job, she also has retired from the kitchen. So I now have to sit her down and then show her the word of God. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Your ministry is such that you don't retire. And the grace to do it to the end, God will give unto you in Jesus' name. Look at Proverbs chapter 31 verse 15. The Bible says that she rises also while it is yet night and giveth me to her household and a portion to her maidens. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. As a woman, part of your ministry is to be a keeper of the house. Household manager. You are a manager. You are a manager. Uh, let me quickly back up to the one of cook. You know the title I gave my wife in the family? Eh? She's a, you, you want me to tell you? Uh, how much will you pay now? Amen. She is the DOF. Director of Food. Amen. She's the director. Don't you know whether you like it or not, it's whatever she prepares that you eat. If you, if you don't want to eat, good, good for you. Amen. It's whatever she prepares. So she's the director. And sometimes you have to fast and pray, oh God, help her to do the right one that will go well. Oh. Amen. Now, you are the manager of the house. Please understand. The man may be the one paying the bill. Whether you like it or not, the one managing the house is the woman. When they fail, everything is in disarray. You go to a house that is always dirty, and I can tell you about the dirty woman in the house. You go to a house that is always looking clean, and then I can tell you about neat, clean, tidy woman in that family. 
If you don't know this, please understand it's part of your ministry. You don't have to be the one doing everything. You don't have to die. But because you are the manager, you are the controller, you are the director, you can delegate people to do things. You give the instruction and the direction. I'm not saying that you should wake up in the morning and have no, no rest, no sleep uh, until you go to bed in the night and then wake up in the morning. That's not what you're talking about. But you are the one that say, John, that is in the wrong place. Pick it up. Put it there. Uh, Mary, sweep the floor, clean the house, do this and that. Hey, Jennifer, have you done your laundry? Praise the Lord. Amen. But you know some women, I'm not gonna, I've seen some of them, when the man says, why are the place dirty? Uh, James and uh, Jenny, go and wash them. What does mommy do? What does mommy do? Aha, uh -huh. thank you so much. Uh, how do you know you are not married yet? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is mommy that will quickly run down there and wash in the dishes. Uh, you don't want to die before your time. Train the children how to be neat and tidy. Praise God. But because you want to do everything, you are the one that will do the laundry. You are the one that will do the, the, the flooring. You are the one that will do the cooking. Before you know it, you die before your time. Things must change and things will change in Jesus' name. As a mother, you are a nurse. You are a nurse. You may not have gone to medical school. You may not have gone to, med to, to nursing school. But at least you should know well enough to know when to call the doctor. And most women, trust me, they are doctors in the house. That's another one I give to my wife doctor in the house she's the one that will prescribe medication to everybody but herself will refuse to take a single one of them <laughs> and when she's giving you you must take it i just look at her and say <laughs> she's the second mother <laughs> praise god you must take it but if you give it to her you are looking for trouble. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't you know sometimes, even before this age, when children are having blockages in their sinus, amen, some of the women, they have the medication in their mouth. You know what I'm talking about? They don't go to the hospital. What do they do? They put their mouth and then they... <laughs> Amen. I don't know how it tastes in their mouth. I never saw one. <laughs> Praise God. And with the same mouth, they want to come and kiss you later on. <laughs> Somebody say Amen. You are the housekeeper. Amen. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14 says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide their house, give no occasion to the uh, adversary to speak reproachfully. Keep your home. Keep your children. Keep your family. As I quickly put this to a close, I want to tell you that Part of your ministry as a woman is to show care and concern to everyone in the family. Even to strangers that come to your family. Show care and concern. It's your duty to coordinate all the affairs in the family. It's your responsibility to connect everybody in the family with God and with one another. You connect yourself with your husband. You connect the children with your husband. You connect everybody together so that there can be joy and happiness all around. You correct, you correct, but not criticize. As a mother, you can correct your husband. You can correct your children, but not criticizing them. Because of time, I'll just quickly go over this without explaining so much on them. You comply with your husband 
by the grace of God, you don't turn to be the one that is uh, complaining or whining. You, you commemorate, you commemorate your husband, you commemorate your children. What does what that mean? You memorialize them. You know some words you have to say slowly, otherwise you may end up biting your tongue. You memorialize them, you honor them, you remember them, you observe them and celebrate them. You know, if you ask me now, uh, when is my birthday, I have to think twice to remember. But thank God for this country, because everything you do, they say your birthday, your birthday. So they help us to remember. But even with that, sometimes uh, uh, I have to know from somebody, so if you're expecting me now to be remembering your birthday, you will wait. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? But women, they have everything. Even some men, they go to their children's school, they say, when is your child's birthday? <laughs> I say, let me ask my wife. They don't know. So, you women, we appreciate you and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. But then understand that you are there also to console, to calm situations down, to be there to support and to soothe. You are to complement all the works of everyone in the family, and especially your husband. Many a times you have issue. Understand until you come to that, understand that your husband is your first son. You won't understand the need for you not to compete with him. Some women are competing with their husband. My husband is making this money. I must make this money. My husband bought this car. I must buy this one. This house was built. You are not a competitor. You are to compliment. At the end of the day, well, I pray your husband will live long. But from experience, they die early. At the end of the day, who owns everything? It's you. And if you belong to part of the country whereby a family want to take over everything, you men, before you die, do your will. If I die, this belongs to my family. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. So, we cooperate one, one with another. Uh, you cooperate with your children in anything they are doing. You get involved, you get concerned, and then you build their character, your comportment. I spoke about that earlier on. Everything is done to the glory of God, and God will be glorified in your life in Jesus' name. The ministerial characteristics. We've seen the calling, the duties, the responsibility. What are the characteristics now? Well, number one, you must be a woman of wisdom. Time will not permit me to read to you from the book of First Samuel, chapter 25, and then dissect it well enough for us. And then read to you Proverbs chapter 31. I know we've been reading from that Proverbs 31. And then get into the nitty gritty of it because of time. But we'll try and see how much or how far we can go in them. First Samuel chapter 25. First Samuel chapter 25. There is a woman there, because I talk about wisdom, that manifested and demonstrated wisdom in all that she did. And with her wisdom by her wisdom, she was able to save life. First Samuel, chapter, what chapter did I mention? Chapter 25. And then we see the case of this woman called... Abigail, Abigail, Abigail. Let's look at it from this uh, first uh, Samuel chapter 25. Let's look at it from verse 10. And Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants now, nowadays, that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my sharers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and took him all those uh, and told him all those sayings. And David said, verse 13, unto his men, Get ye on 
every man his sword. And they gathered on every man his sword. And David also gathered on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the storm. But one of the young men told, what's the name? Abigail, neighbor's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. He railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither miss we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the field. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day. All the while, we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak unto. Praise the Lord. Stop right there. We're going to continue uh, very shortly. Look at it. Uh, the story is uh, David was in the wilderness in the course of him running away from Saul. And then Nabal had a lot of sheep. He had the uh, people that were working for him. And they were also in the wilderness. They came in contact with David and his uh, soldiers. And David and his soldiers, they took care of them. They protected them. They shielded them from attack. Uh, and they preserved everything about them. And one day, the news came that the man, Nabal, was uh, celebrating his wealth and sharing things. And David now sent messengers unto Nabal that, well, we have treated your people well. Can you please send us some things at least to refresh our soul? And then the man insulted them, railed, railed on them, abused them. And so the men went back to talk to David and say, this is the uh, response we got from Nabal. And David was wrought. And David gathered himself and his men, going to Nabal. And David made a promise, if by the daybreak eh, there is a single soul that remains in that family, let God do so unto him. And so David was now on a vengeance mission. Why? Because of a brutish man, a brutish husband, a careless husband, a, a husband that, according to the Bible, nobody can talk to him. Nobody can advise him. And the Bible says, look at it in verse, uh, verse 11. Uh, he's a son of Belia that a man cannot speak to him. Now, verse 18, where we are going. Mother's Day. Somebody say Mother's Day. Verse 18. Then Abigail made haste. There is time for everything. Time for everything. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of pash corn and a hundred clusters of resin and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servant, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. I will come back to that verse 19. And it was as it was so. As she rode on the ass that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her. And she met them. Now David has said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow had in the wilderness. So that nothing was missed of of all that pertained unto him, and he said, and he had requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I live of all that pertained unto him by the morning, by the morning light, any that pissed against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted up the earth. And fell before David on her face. And bowed herself to the ground. And fell at his feet. And said, upon me, my Lord. Upon me, let this iniquity be. Look at wisdom. 
And let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience. And hear the words of thy handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men of thy Lord, whom thou did send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord that we told in thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thy own hand, now let thy enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as neighbor. And now, this blessing which the handmaid had brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Somebody say amen. amen. Because my Lord fighted the battle of the Lord, and the evil had not been found in thee all thy days. Now, again, because of time, we stop in that reading. Abigail pleaded with David. Abigail persuaded David. She applied wisdom. She put the fault and the blame upon herself. And then, look at it. She became prophetic as well. Because God had a plan and purpose for David. And he was saying, David, please don't avenge for yourself. God has been fighting for you because God will surely build you a house. God will settle and establish your throne. And that got into the head of David and said, what a minute. How did this woman get to know what I am going through? The plan and the purpose of God for my life. And she succeeded in calming David down. But you know some women, when things like this happen, instead of behaving like Abigail, and getting wise and going behind to prepare the ground for their husband and for their children and for the whole family, they take side. Abigail was not like that. Abigail was honest. Abigail was sincere. Abigail knew that uh, her husband was in the wrong and she dealt with the situation. Of course, at such a time, Abigail knew if I talked to my husband at this time, he wasn't even going to hear anything. You know the reason why the man was drunk. Sometimes some men are drunk with power, drunk with position, drunk with name, drunk with authority, and drunk with all kinds. And some of them are not even rich, but they are still drunk with pride. Amen? Uh, so the woman waited until when the drunkenness was gone, and then went to neighbor and told him and said, this and this and this happened. How dare you do that? And the man said, did I really do that? Time is of essence. God will give us the wisdom to know when to speak and when not to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1, verse 1 tells us that, um, that uh, a gentle answer turns away wrath. That's what she did with David. So, Abigail had that characteristic of a wise woman. She stopped a hostile situation from taking place. Uh, and she recognized the injustice that took place, that her husband did the wrong thing, and she corrected it. Uh, and uh, not only that, uh, she met the needs of David. They were in the wilderness. They had no rest. They were running from um, Saul. And Abigail provided um, materials and gave unto David and that solved the problem and uh, Abigail was a woman that watches over her house. There is another thing I noticed from there. The woman Abigail was approachable. Approachable. Because she was approachable, a good characteristic, the servants were able to go to her and say, ma'am, this is what happened. Don't you see? Didn't you hear? What are you doing about it? If nothing is done, we are all dead. And Abigail did what needed to be done. And God saved their life. God will save the life of your family. I said God will save the life of your family. The Lord will protect your whole household in Jesus' name. 
Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding also. Chapter 14 of that proverb verse 1 says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. The Lord will make you to be such a woman that builds and not plucking down your own house in Jesus' name. James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18 says, Who is a wise man? And then deal with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strive in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth, this wisdom descended not from above, uh, descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, then gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality. Somebody say without partiality. You don't say because this is my daughter, this is my son, this is my husband, this is my wife, then you are partial. No. What affects the goose affects the gander without partiality, without partiality and without hypocrisy and the Bible now says in verse 18, and the fruit of righteousness is known in peace of them that see, that make peace. The Lord will make you to be one of them in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So as we look at the life of this woman called Abigail we see quite a lot of characteristics in her that will help every woman to be who God has ordained for them to be and you'll be a blessing to your generation in Jesus' name. I told you that Abigail was timely in the things that she did. If she had waited, death would have come upon everybody. And uh, a godly woman a mother in ministry will be a corrigible person. Like all that I've been talking about, maybe somebody have seen, oh, I made a mistake here, I made a mistake here, I made a mistake there. That spirit of corrigibility will make you to begin to make amen. Uh, to make amen. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1 says, Whosoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. You will not be a stupid woman. Amen. The Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. Finally, 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 the master's crowning of mothers. When you have been through all the challenges of life, all the pains of birth, all the problems of marriage, and all, sometimes the rejection, the criticism, you have done your best, and yet you get uh, uh, corrected, rebuked, uh, and insulted because of that. At other times, it's even the extended family member that will come, or maybe your in-laws. Uh, at other times, your children that you have labored on will not even look at your eyes to appreciate you. At other times, it's even your husband that you are serving Understand, if you will just lean on the Lord, he will defend you. He will reward you. He will give you joy at the end of your life. He will sustain you through and through. He will give you peace and happiness in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says that if women will endure in holiness, in charity, that God will grant unto them long life. Actually, I'm talking about First Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. He says, notwithstanding, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Long life will be yours in Jesus' name. Now, when you do your part as a woman, and if you have faith before, you can still make amends. That is why I talk about restitution. You are teaching your children restitution. You also do it. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 31, verses 28 to 31. Proverbs 31, 28 to 31. It says, her children arise up. Your children will rise up. I say your children will rise up. And call her blessed. Her husband also. 
and he praised her. Please stop right there. I noticed something as I was preparing this message. That that verse 28 talked about two things. And some women that are not wise enough, they lean on one at the expense of the other. Some mothers, they raise their children against their husband. The Bible says that while her children are calling her blessed, the husband will also praise her. Do you do things in such a way that the heart of your husband is blessing you? Pay attention here. We don't pay attention to this many a times. Isaac was married to Rebecca. Rebecca, remember where we started from? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And he's talking about this ministry. This ministry. Understand, Rebecca divided the family. Love one, hated the other. Of course, Isaac also loved one, hated the other. And all the craftiness and the scheming, everything were done. Rebecca, like most foolish women, was seeking and cutting the favor of a child. At the end of the day, she later suddenly realized that the blessings upon the children comes from the father. When the man was not saying it is time for, what's his name? Esau to be blessed. Then she schemed again. Brought in Jacob. Jacob, I had your father. And mothers always hear their husband. They are the first to hear. And ungodly women use whatever they hear to plan against the man. But the wise one use it to build the family together. You'll be a builder. I said you'll be a builder. And then she schemed and said, uh, Jacob, I heard your father saying this. And then, go do this, go do this, go do this. And then, lies were concocted together. And then, uh, it's, uh, Isaac said, the voice is the voice of Jacob. But, the skin is the skin of Esau. The man knew that there was a skin. The man knew. But what was he going to do? He let it go. Rebecca said unto Jacob eventually, run for your life. Go to my brother in Pedan Aram. After a few days, I will come and fetch you on Unfortunately, before Jacob came, down, came back, she was there. She never enjoyed that. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. I say you will enjoy the fruit of your labor. So, please, do things in such a way that the heart of your husband will bless you too. And the heart of your husband will bless the children. Jacob came to get the blessing, but look at it. For 20 years, he suffered. He's, if not for the promise of God for his life, he would have been destroyed completely. Completely. And thank God himself found the Lord. You remember on his way, he remembered to pray. Teach your children to pray. No matter what has happened, because of prayer, God had mercy. Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he Preset her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. Pay attention here. Favor is deceitful. You know, on Mother's Day, on Mother's Day, people buy gifts, and most women, they cherish that. Please understand that there's nothing wrong with gifts. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is is vain is the law from the heart or we are just running the motion america is celebrating mothers today you celebrate your mother one day in a year you celebrate your father one day in a year let the celebration be on daily basis i said let it be on daily basis and some people just because of a little gift they forget about the real thing no favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but the, a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. 
I need an amen there. Amen. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. The Lord is saying that a woman that is into this ministry effectively, conscientiously, and righteously, the Lord, not just that the husband will praise her, not just that the children will bless her, heaven will bless her as well. In the name of Jesus, women like that will live to see and enjoy the fruit of their labor. Their children will live. I said their children will live. Their husband also will live. None of them will die before their time in, in Jesus' name. And above all, there's going to be inner peace. Inner peace that I have done the best I know to do. There is going to be joy in their heart. And then the time will come. The time will come that all that they have labored on, don't you know the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days, it will come back. It will come back. All the labor that the man has labored on, you will enjoy them. All the labor of your children, you will enjoy them. And I pray that your labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Very quickly, come back to Abigail. First Samuel chapter 25. Now I look at verse 39. First Samuel 25 verse 39. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, because Nabal finally died. After a few days that God saved David from going to kill him and the family, God himself did the work and Nabal died. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, blessed be the Lord that had pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and had kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. At the end of the day, that woman, Abigail, became a rich woman. She became the wife of David. And the Lord rewarded her. He will reward you in Jesus' name. So you have a ministry. You have a calling. Understand your calling. Stay in your calling. Fulfill your calling. Don't compare your family with another family. Go to the word of God and do what God has called you to do and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Understand that there is need for you to connect with God first of all. Are you a child of God? Are you born again? Are you walking in the right? Are you walking in the will of God? Are you following the steps of the Lord? Are you a blessing to your generation? Are you converted? Do you have a clean and clear conscience? Do you have a controlled tongue? Skillful tongue, consecrated body, converted company, godly association. Are you a diligent woman, always working with your hands? Spirited exploit. Are you cooperative with your husband? Are you supportive? Are you caring for him? Do you pray for your children? Do you teach them the will of God, the will of God? Or you just expect things to happen on their own. The Lord will help you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will uphold you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will prosper you. This is the mother's day. The Lord will be there for you at your hour of need. All the pain you've been through. All the challenges of your life. The Lord themselves by the power of his mind. Will comfort you. He's your comforter. He's your guide. He's your helper. He's your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I call on our mommy, mommy and dad, to come around up the prayer for us. Our blessed God in heaven, we thank and we bless your name. We thank you, Father, for this day that is called Mother's Day, that mothers are remembered and reflections are being made. Thank you, Father, for all the messages that we have received. Thank you, Father, for Abigail, 
Thank you, Father, for her timeliness and her wisdom. God of heaven, King of glory, commit all the women into the palms of your hand. Blessed Redeemer, Lord, God of heaven, I pray that none of us will fail in our responsibilities. In Jesus' name. Blessed Redeemer, King of glory, we need you, God Father, every time, just as the song said, we need you. There is nothing we can do by ourselves. We are, you are our sole dependency. In everything, Father, King of glory, we always look up unto you. There is nothing, oh God, Father, Lord, that we, can that we can accomplish without you. So, Lord God of heaven, we commit ourselves into the palms of your hand, Lord, we pray. That everything we need, oh God, that you will give it unto us in Jesus' name. The wisdom on how to handle our family. Lord God of heaven, give us the spirit of intercession. Give us a spirit of prayer, O oh God, and supplication before you all the time. My Lord and my God, everything, O oh God, that takes away our time. I pray, Lord, that you give us the wisdom on how to cut them off in Jesus' name. Righteous God of heaven, make us, O oh God, women of the world that will spend time reading the word and being doers of this word. Because, O oh God, King of glory, we are perfect example to our fam in our families. Our children are watching us. Others outside are watching us. At our work, they are watching us. Lord, I'm praying, I'm asking that you make us, O God, perfect example of who we say we are in Jesus' name. Righteous Redeemer, King of glory, I commit your servants into the palms of your hand. And I'm praying, I'm asking, O God, Father, as he has spoken unto us, Lord, speak to him. Make him, O God, Father, who you really want him to be. Everything in him, O God, Father, Lord, I pray that he has, he has used for us. Lord, I pray you will refill him. And everything that needs to be chiseled out of his life, Lord, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless every man, bless every woman, bless every child, bless every young adult, and let's bless, O God. Father, Lord, I pray that you will reveal yourself unto us in daily basis, O God. Father, because your presence is very important to us, that every day in our life, O God, Father, when we feel your presence, O God, Father, Lord, King of glory, and the Spirit of God directing us, Father, everything we do will be of righteousness, of holiness. The grace of God to live this life that others will see us as light, give it unto us. We thank you, we bless, we honor, we exalt your righteous name. Be thou exalted, O God, this day. For in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.